Hi guys, my name is Mia from Mima Design Laser Files, and I'm going to review this trace from Shaper Tool today. I've been designing files for laser cutting for the past three years, so I had to get one of these to see if it could ease in my work. So maybe it can, maybe it can. Let's dive in and find out. So to order one of these, you go to shapetools.com and in the menu bar, you pick trace and you can now see a lot of details on it. What I really loved was the center line or outline function that it has, but let's see how well it works. To order it, you press order now and the price is $99 excluding taxes plus shipping. I did a little additional purchase and bought these six uh, five millimeter build pins for $12. I could obviously have gotten these much cheaper from Amazon or somewhere else. When you get the box, you get it like this. And you just pull it apart. And here's the contents. So you have the frame, which is the trace, you get a free pen, and you get a manual on how to get started. So let's open up the manual. I've already been testing mine a bit, so I'll just do it to show you. So you get a little inspiration book. Which can help you. you. You could trace these as well. What I like about mine is that it's you're able to trace actual shapes. So if I want to trace this scissor, for example, I'll get the correct and accurate dimensions of the, the size on it. You're supposed to be able to make single lines. So far, I'm not impressed by it, um, what it's great for might be recipe tracing and text tracing, but I'll show you how to do that because honestly, I'm not so impressed by that either since I use Lightburn now and Lightburn comes with a trace function as well. But I'll let you be the judge and you can see what you think. Also, to get started, there's a manual on how to do so. You need to uh, get the app and scan a QR code. On the back of the frame, you have this QR code that you just um, register and it will jump directly into your page. So registration is really easy. The app is easy and I'll show you that. So I already made a few steps that I want tested. Uh, last night I drew this. So let's see how the trace will do this compared to Lightburn. Also, I have some old wedding cards. They are in Danish. I'm Danish. But anyway, I love this handwriting. So let's see how well this will do. And also I have a kids card. Um, so we'll see how well that will do. And I want to make the scissor trace as well. So I'll move this aside and get ready. Let's get on with some testing. Uh, to use the trace frame, you have to make an account. It's pretty easy to set up uh, and you can connect it with Google as well. So once you have that, Take a picture and scan the QR code, which is on the back of your frame. Give permission to use the camera. Mine is in Danish, sorry. Um, and since the image I created is only partial, I'll place some regular white copy paper on the back. So it doesn't get all the lines from this plywood that I'm filming on. And you have the frame here. 
So let's place the drawing and see if it can trace it. So you just want to hold your phone and you can shoot from various angles. But since I'm filming straight downwards, I have to do it like this so you can see it. Let's see if I can catch it. Press ready to capture once you have it. Oh, let's try again. And it now traced my drawing. So it also took a little bit of this round circle that I did. I want to use this as an SVG engraving for my uh, uh, compounds. So I did trace the ornament size because the great thing that I really like about this one is that it does the exact measurements of your drawing. So an easy way to remove everything that you don't want is to hit these two bars. You can now turn on remove and just wipe your finger over where you don't want the tracing to be. If you accidentally remove, let's say this, you can hit select and wipe it back on. So my SVG is actually done now. Also, by hitting these bars, you can choose this little icon and you can make it more or less smooth. I don't want to do that, but it's probably great if you're building a solid shape of some kind. So I'm perfectly happy about this. What I was hoping for was to be able to make single line designs and the shaper or yeah, the frame should be able to do so if you hit center line. So let's just try that. As you can see, it makes a bunch of crazy lines and drawings. So I can't really use this function for my drawings. I might be able to do it on text though. So I'll go back to outline and once you have your image, you just hit OK and you can now save it as a SVG, save it to the Shaper files or open with Shaper Studio, which is an add-on that costs money. So I'll save it as an SVG and send it to myself on email like that. So I now have my SVG and it's ready to engrave or something like that and to open in Lightburn. Speaking of Lightburn, I want to do a uh, comparison on how well this frame will do versus the uh, direct trace in Lightburn. So to trace in Lightburn, I usually just take a photo of my sketch like that and since my laptop isn't a Mac I do have a Mac but I don't use it I'll forward it through messenger to myself like that so I'll take this it was kind of blurry I might take a new picture um, but I'll forward it and open it in Lightburn and I'll show you how to do both uh, and you can see what might work better for you. Uh, let's see, Mia. So oh, there's my picture. The next thing I wanted to test is text. So I have this wedding card on Danish, um, but I love the handwriting. So let's see how well the shaper will trace that. So I go back in my tracer window, allow photos, and I'm ready to capture. So let's see. Looks good. It is missing some spots on the inside. 
if you can see it. But anyway, it's usable. So I'll remove these shadows. Oops, I took some of the text off. I might want to zoom in. So I love how easy it is to clean the image on this one. So once you've cleaned, you hit done. And there's my text. And it is the same size as it's written on the card, which is awesome. Especially if you want to make the exact same size on something else. So I'll also take a photo of this one and send it to Lightburn. But let's get on with the last piece I have. This is Kit's text. Oh, actually, I wanted to show um, that this is the SVG. We could see how well it will do in Centerline, since it's text. And it's not bad, but it is missing some lines. So it's not really usable anyway. But I'll save it as the outline and send it to myself. I don't think know if I send it twice now, but okay. So to take the new picture, you just hit this camera button. And I now have this card from a small child called Lerke. So let's see. The trace looks good. It's still missing some parts from the hearts, but I don't blame the frame because it's glued on top. So let's remove what I don't want. I could probably keep just whoops, a few of the hearts. Okay, and here you have an issue because the E is connecting with this line that I actually didn't want, but I'm kind of forced to have it as well. Uh, okay, so I'll take it and then I'll see if I can erase it somehow when I'm in light burn instead. Or I could just try and trace it again. Let's see if it will do it the second time. Okay, so the line is still there, but it's not attached to the top part which makes my life a little easier. So let's remove these parts. I just want the names, Lerke, Mia, Peter. And I need to get the E with the line Touched. So select the E, Oops. remove that line I don't want and that one either. And, oops, not these as well. So let's see if that's that done. And this is great. So let's see the single line on this one since it's text. It 
it's a little slow there you go and this is actually not bad i could definitely work with this so let's compare it quick so there you have it so i'll still want to i could maybe just send both let's see how it works when i'm saving the single line as well because the issue in Lightburn is that when I trace this, I won't be able to trace it as a single line. Oops. So I would have to, sorry about that, I would have to um, trace this uh, manually by making lines in Lightburn. So the reason I bought this was in hopes that I could use the single line function and it seems like it could work. Um, but still, maybe it requires some, some extra work. The last thing I wanted to show is because it's so accurate, it's great for tracing tools. So let's see, say that I wanted to build a holder for the scissor. I could just take my pen and draw around it. And I'll just do it quick so it might be a little messy. So oh, it didn't even connect here. I'll just do it like this. So you want to trace it a bit slower and more accurate if you want this to work. But I just wanted to show this because this is a cool feature with this, this frame. Um, let's open there. So again, permission. Ready to capture. Take the outline and remove this, hit done. And I now have the exact measurements of the scissor. So if you're building a lot of jigs or you want to make, let's see, you want to trace some letters like these to be exact, this is a awesome feature. Also, I've seen that it can trace uh, leaves, the shape of leaves and stuff like that. I won't go into more details on this part, but I just wanted to show you because that's actually and honestly a really, really great feature. So let's head on to my computer and I'll show you how to use these SVGs that I just traced and how to trace the pictures I took in Lightburn. I've already opened my Lightburn software and the SVGs I sent to my mail I downloaded to my download folder. So I'll just drag them onto the desktop on my Lightburn window like this. So for the pictures that I took, I sent them to my messenger. So I'll go to my messenger and just hit copy picture and paste it on my desktop in Lightburn. This is actually the same procedure that I would use if I had drawn in Procreate. I just send it to my messenger, copy the picture and paste it in Lightburn and then I can trace it directly in there. So now I have everything and let's start with my text. I'm not really satisfied with how well the shape I trace traced it. Um, you can see that it's pretty solid and it's missing some pieces and bits. 
I did this previously and this trace was way better than the one that I just did. I usually use red for um, engraving but I'll go to my windows section and turn on build smooth and then make my black layer to engrave and then I can see how it would look if I was to engrave it like this. So it has some flaws but let's see how well the trace from light burn would do. So I'll make them similar size and I'll click my picture and if I left click on it uh, I will pick trace image and this is what settings uh, Lightburn is already suggesting. Um, I could try to toggle with the threshold and the cutout to see if I can get these uh, areas that I don't want traced uh, to be removed. But I actually think that Lightburn does a decent job. So instead of playing around with it, I'll hit cancel and I'll trace it again and I'll just go with light burn settings. So OK and then I want to ungroup everything. I actually think this looks pretty decent. But ungroup and make kind of a square around the text that I don't want to get deleted. So I'm holding down my control button while I'm making this box and I can now hit delete and get everything else away. So there's a few bits that I want to remove as well like that and this is kind of sad that I didn't get the entire B but trace didn't either. So this is the difference between the shaper trace and the light burn trace. I don't know what looks better, that's up to you to decide. I have my opinion and I probably like the light burn trace better than the shaper. But it's probably a matter of choice and what you like better. So I'll let you be the judge of what you think is prettier. But let's just drag these down here and we can continue with my floral drawing. So this is the SVG from Sheva and as you see I use the entire uh, space because not many people know that if you zoom out you have so much space to do your designs. Um, as a designer I really love to use all my board. Um, so I'm doing the same this time. Um, this is the trace image and I'll just enlarge it a little bit so it's equal in size. And it actually did a pretty decent job. It's missing some details somewhere um, and also it's made these crazy notes. Um, let's just see how light burn does. So once again I'm using the settings that light burn chose from me and I'll ungroup and I'll just delete manually because it's not that easy to draw the box like I did before. So I'll make some minor boxes and just go around my design to get rid of all the stuff that I don't want. So let's just clear this out and I think I might be done. I might have a little bit here. So that's it. And you can see the difference. It's really not that different from the uh, shape trace. Um, there's a, a little bit of details that Lightburn picked up that Jaba Trace didn't. Um, I honestly think that Shape Trace might be a little better for these type of things because it 
kind of round your designs more than the light band trace does. Um, I did make a previous trace. Let me just see if I can go back and find it. So this is the text. I must have deleted the other part. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see. Back, 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 back. And there we go. So the top one is from the shape trace and the bottom one is my light burn. So you might see the difference in these two and why I maybe prefer shaper on this one. But again, it's a matter of choice. Um, it also had some interrupted lines in the shaper trace. But yeah. I I think both are doing a pretty decent job. Um so so it's up to you again what you think is easier and better. But anyway, here is the floral. So let's move these away and look at the scored design that I made from shaper trace. That's awesome because you can't really trace um Scored design with light burn. So the way that you can do this with the trace is just brilliant. Also, it hadn't uh, attached all my lines, so it's pretty easy to just remove the pieces that I don't want. Uh, if there's something that's uh, stuck, I can go in and pick edit notes and I can then remove it. So I'll pick edit notes and if I hover over the lines that I don't want and press D, not delete, but D, um, I'll uh, delete the, the lines that is um, access to my design. So let me just clean this up a little and then we can see how well the uh, trace will do in light burn. And as I said, I can't really trace it as a single line, so I'll just trace it as a engraved design or engraved SVG. Since the lines are so thin, I could probably score them and still have a great outcome, but let's be honest, a single line design is better than a dual lined um, design when you want to score it. So instead of deleting the way I did before, I'll just ungroup and while I'm holding down my control button, I'll click on the letters. So I keep those. So I'll basically click out everything that I don't want to delete. And since Lightburn did a decent job on my hearts, I might keep those as well. So let's hit the hearts too. And I think that's it. Hit the lead. Whoops. I took away the A. I'll just go back. And there we go. So now I have the trays from Lightburn as a SVG meant for engraving, but you could score it as well, but it will be dual line. So this is really one of the functions that I love about the shaper. Also, I love the possibility that you can go in and uh, outline a scissor or a tool or something like that, and you have the exact measurements of the object. So again, um, you can easily drag and edit your notes on a design like this. 
Um, if you have some lines you don't want, hover over them, press D, as in delete, but not delete, just D, and it will go away. So I obviously need this line, so I'll just go back and add it. But that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you learned a little something um, and that you like this review. If you liked it, uh, please give it a like and also subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, or join my Facebook helping group Laser Up with Mima Design. I'll be happy to make you some more tutorials. Just say the word and I'll see what I can do. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.